Greetings. Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Tina Duckett and I'm the Public Relations Director for the Troop County School System and you're watching Spotlight on Education. This is a great opportunity for you to learn more about our school system, our wonderful accomplishments, student successes, and even some programs that you may not know we offer students. So today joining me is none other than Mr. Ernest Ward. Ernest Ward is the principal at Whitesville Road Elementary School. Thank you, Mr. Ward, for being here today. It's a pleasure, Ms. Duckett. Yes. Thanks for yes. having me. We are really so glad to have you here. And we normally get right to business talking about our schools and all that's taking place with the wonderful babies over there at Whitesville Road Elementary. But before we do that, I think it's important for our audience, our viewers, to get to know you. So would you share a little bit about your professional career in education? Well, I've always had a, a love and a passion for humanity. Um, and I think through the years, um, by going in the military, um, being a part of law enforcement, and then going into education. Um, and, and, and that's where I really, I think I found my passion because it gives you an opportunity to change a generation, uh, to teach people that there can be a difference, to teach people who may not have a hope, to understand that there is a hope um, and there's nothing like it. And that can be found, too, through becoming educated, because yes. knowledge is power. Yes. Oh, so, okay, so tell us a little bit more. Did you serve as a police officer here locally? Yes. Um, in 1987, I joined the LaGrange Police Department, um, and I stayed there until 1994 okay. when I joined uh, the public education. Um, worked my way up through the ranks, became a detective. Uh, enjoyed that. Okay. Um, but I wanted to be able to do more. So now you have the pleasure of serving as a school principal, but where did you start out in, in the Troop County Schools? Was Whitesville Road, that wasn't your initial school where you started, was no, it? No, in 94 I started out at Lone Kang Elementary School. Okay. I was the PE teacher there. Oh. Um, and then during this consolidation in 96, um, Whitesville Road was opened up as an elementary school. Um, and I was a part of the first staff um, that went to White's Road as an elementary school. Um, and I was a PE teacher there for three years. Hmm. Um, and then um, I went into leadership and went to Lone Cane Middle School uh, as an assistant principal. Uh, stayed there for five years, um, then went to Garden Newman, um, and I was kind of half-time principal at Garden Newman, half-time principal at LaGrange High School uh, for a year, and then I ended up going to LaGrange High School for a year, and then back to Garden Newman as principal. Okay, so you've had your field of divisions. You've worked at elementary, middle, and high. I have. Okay, so I won't put you on the spot and ask which one you've enjoyed more, because the students and their development um, is totally different at, the, at those various stages. So have you found your home and love with the elementary? Well, school? I've always had a, a love for elementary school and a passion for elementary because I believe that if you get them early mm -hmm. and you can make the change, then it would be for the better. Um, I had a passion for the high school kids because you got a chance to see them go through that change and, and, and they could see that it made a difference. You could see your impact that you made um, right away with the high school students. Okay. Um, and we're at the, the middle school. I love middle school because it was a challenge daily. Yeah. Never day, ne never, <laughs> never a dull a moment. Dull huh? moment. Yeah. Um, every day was a different day because those kids are going through their hormonal changes, mm. trying to find themselves. Who am I? Where do I fit in? And I think I'm taking all those experiences from middle school and high school and being able to go back to the elementary school and, and hope with the strong instructional leader that I have, uh, Dr. Short, and okay. the strong teaching staff that I have, that we're gonna be able to make a, a difference uh, with the Weiss Road students uh, that they'll never forget. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. And since you've mentioned your staff, tell us a little bit more about them. You mentioned that you have an instructional specialist. Yes. It's and Dr. Lynn Short. Dr. Lynn Short. And, and, and then how many teachers do you have? I have about 45 certified teachers. Okay, okay. 
And how large of a population are you working with this year's student population? About 510 students. Is that about average? Sometimes, you know, it, it, it changes a little, but it kind of... For the most part, yes. it's around 500. Yes, <laughs> That's yes. a lot of little people, huh? <laughs> it is. Okay, so tell us about your school's mission. Every school is driven, even as our system, uh, from a district-wide level, we're driven by a mission. Uh, we have a focus. So what is the school's mission, understanding that it definitely ties into the district mis mission, but tell us what your school mission is. Well, I, I, I kind of look at the mission from two perspectives. You know, uh, we, we have a discipline mission that guides our discipline, and, and, and we have a mission that, that, that guides our instruction. Um, I think there was a time when you could just have a mission that guides instruction. Um, but now there's so many, the, the kids come to the school with, with so many different concerns that they bring to the table um, that you have to deal with the discipline yeah. first You're at definitely times. definitely dealing with the whole child. The whole child. Yes. Um, and the, our mission and our purpose for discipline is, is to maintain a safe learning environment um, and to remove all the distractions that hinder learning. Yes. And so the teachers know that's what the plan is, the students mm -hmm. know that's what the plan is, um, and we try to do a great job of making sure that we maintain that. Um, when it comes to the academic piece, we want to make sure that we provide a comprehensive, high-quality education that will provide the kids with the knowledge and the skills to make sure that they're on grade level when they go to the middle school. Uh, to me, that is so important, it having is. been at the middle school yes. and the high school, to receive kids that have gaps, a kid that's in seventh grade but really on a third grade level reading. Yes. And so we want to make sure that when our kids leave White's Road Elementary School that they're on grade level and they're going to the middle school to be able to compete with everybody else. That's right, and, and not only locally, competing, but we're talking about state, national, internationally, uh, to be ahead, not just there at, at grade level, but even to exceed. And I know that's the goal of every school in our system. Yes. Uh, so tell me about uh, some of the goals you've set in place, to you and your faculty, to work toward this school year as it winds down. Tell us a little bit about some of the goals. Well, we we have many goals, um, but I want to talk about three goals because okay. I think uh, these what we would call the, some of our most critical that would give us the greatest bang for our buck. Okay. Um, improving students' academic performance. Um, Certainly. Helping students develop socially and providing character-based education, um, as well as uh, increasing parents' Uh, participation and parents involvement yes yes so I know that you you've got to have strategies and different um, uh, ways of making this happen so tell us some of the strategies or services that you provide to to help you meet these goals and we have a, a lot of different strategies and um, but there are two principles that I try to share with my staff um, to use as filters um, to make sure they understand that when we put these strategies in place, uh, I think just about at every building that I've been a part of, you know, if you ask the staff, they will hear me make the statement that Rome wasn't built in a day. Right. You know, <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I like to try to take a little of the pressure off of the teachers, but at the same time, I tell them, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, but yet Rome was being built, you know. Um, another principle that I will share with them um, constantly is to make sure that they understand that, that the experts are among us. Um, and what I mean by that, being that the experts are among us, is that the, the, the teachers are the ones that are in the trenches mm -hmm. doing the work daily. Mm -hmm. And I think they're in the best position to know what's best for students. So what I have to be able to do in me and my leadership is to provide collaboration opportunities okay. for teachers to get together 
work together, uh, whether it's vertically or whether it's horizontal. Um, three what, tap. What do you mean? I'm sorry. When you say vertical collaboration and horizontal collaboration among teachers, what does that mean? Vertical collaboration is 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 when teachers get together mm -hmm. um, as across grade levels and, and, and come together and, and talk about how they can best meet the needs of the kids, um, meet, look at what the weaknesses are with their data, what are the strengths in the data, and put the, together a plan to meet those needs. Okay, so that's across grade levels, so fourth, fifth, sixth, first, second, third, okay. Yes, okay. Um, and then they would look at it amongst team, horizontally, you know, uh, and say, okay, what can we do in fourth grade? Okay, you know? so by grade, though, yes. at that point. To see okay. if we can meet the needs of the, key, the kids. We see that there's a weakness in reading. You know, what are some things that we can put in place that make sure we can move kids uh, on grade level as it relates to reading? And if we have a large majority of our kids on grade level, what can we do to accelerate them and move them to the next level? And I would imagine, like you said, uh, the teachers are the experts. They're in the trenches. And amongst uh, the teachers are best practices as well because Absolutely. a teacher in one classroom could be using a strategy that could definitely benefit other teachers. And so with this opportunity to collaborate, that knowledge is shared knowledge now. Absolutely. So that that's crucial. Uh, well, tell us about uh, other support avenues in place to help you meet your goals like communicating uh, your expectations and looking at data well when we you know data data is very important you know you know to say that we are data driven is, is not to just look at your data when the crct scores are available and then say okay here's what took place and then move on right. you know Data using data is is a continuous process. Yes. That that where the data truly drives your instructions from day to day. It impacts your lesson plans. Mm. It determines how long you stay on a particular lesson. Uh, if the kids understand it, there's not a need to stay there for a long period of time. But if you see that it's something that the kids do not understand, then you need to according to the data, spend a little bit more time there to bring all the kids up to where they need to be. Um, that, that's very important. That, that is. And you talked about increasing parental engagement. Uh, so how do you do that? One of the things that um, we, we did to, to bring that about is that this year we put in place um, a PTO uh, oh, for, for years. Um, I know, well, last year, I don't know how long last year, I know we didn't have a PTO. And so this year we put a PTO in place. And for our viewers, it's parent teacher organization. Parent teacher organization. Yes. Um, and, and my PTO is small, but they're, they're, they're hard workers. Uh, they're very hard workers. And uh, we, we put a lot of different things in place this year. Um, this, we had a, a Santa's shop hmm. where um, they felt that we had a lot of kids that wanted to buy their parents and siblings think gifts for Christmas and so they went out and bought little gifts that didn't cost a whole lot you know some things cost a quarter up to a dollar and 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 I was amazed at how much sold uh, mm -hmm. because those kids wanted to buy things you know for the parents uh, for their teachers uh, and they really used that 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 center shop to do that um, also, the PTO, we, we put in place what's called the a spring fling, um, and it brought parents into the building, um, brought parents to the school, and um, many of the kids showed up because they wanted to be able to, I was in the dunking booth, uh, and so they got a chance to throw balls and dunk their principal <laughs> in oh, the water. if nothing else, <laughs> they would have shown up for that. <laughs> but. In essence, that gave us an opportunity to be able to talk to parents, uh, let parents see me from a different perspective, you know, and not always the, the disciplinarian who's always real structure and everything, but to see me having fun, laughing, shaking hands, cutting up, saying, how are you doing, and, and those things. Uh, uh, I enjoy that. 
Good. Uh, and I think the kids got a chance to so enjoy that as well. So the spring fling was a, a, almost like a fair or car carnival Ye type of yes. environment. Yes, Festive. with cake walks, you oh, know. Oh, good. Uh -huh. um, a trolley that, a little train that took kids on was a ride. Was it like field day? Well, no, it Different. wasn't field day. Oh, okay. Uh, but yet we, we have field day also that <clears throat> gives us an opportunity to have a lot of parent involvement, you know, and I was real <clears throat> amazed at how many parents that we were able to utilize at that time to fill out the parent surveys to give us feedback. Oh. Um, so a dual purpose. You were able to receive feedback yes. from the parents just by offering these various events. Yes. Good. That was smart. <laughs> nice strategy. Now, I know you do something else. There's another event. It's called the Dunking. Dunkin' Dads? Dunkin' with Dads. Dunkin' with Dads. The, there's, there's, there's a Dunkin' with Dads, and then there's a Mother's Mother Daughter's Tea. Tea, okay. Um, those both were awesome as well. Um, got parents into the building, um, got a chance to interact, and, and, and when the staff first shared it with me that, you know, it was Dunkin' with Dads, you know, I, I assumed that, you know, it was about donuts because... <laughs> okay. We've my done experience that in the past. at the elementary yeah. with, with my kids, you know, donuts and dads, you know, but it was about dunking a basketball. Okay. And so the males would bring their fathers with them, and um, and and that was a myself and uh, Mr. Thornton and Mr. Tuck. Uh, and, and those Mr. are your teachers. Yes, some of and your Mr. Teachers. Kyle Bryant, you know, we got a chance to play basketball. Um, against some of the LaGrange College basketball players, um, as well as spend time with some of the fathers um, and, and, and the students. And, and that, was, that was a great experience. Good, good. And it brought a male presence into the school. I, I, more males than I've ever seen before in elementary school. It, it, it was amazing um, that they, they came out that night to be a part of that. Um, also, we have what an event called the Veteran Day mm. uh, for the veterans. We honor veterans, you know. And that's a huge event in this community. It's very I've huge. had the pleasure of attending, and it is a packed house. Uh, I think Dr. Wright and um, she did a great job in uh, putting that in place. And so, uh, what Dr. Short and I did was just continue what was already in place. And, and that was the former principal, yes. Dr. Wright. Yes. Okay. Um, and it was a huge event, you know, and. And, and I was shocked that I didn't know about it, being that I'm <laughs> ex-military, but it, it was an honor, you know. Yes. Um, we invited in veterans and um, I, Baptist Tabernacle was the church that provided all the meals. Oh, um, fantastic. They, and it, it, it was just amazing because they fed over 500 individuals. Mm. Um, and and that's, a, that's a huge commitment. Um, that they've taken on, and I think for the last five to six years they've done this, oh. and so that's I think that's kind of tie into they're they're one of our partners in, in education. Okay. So th that is awesome that someone would make that big of a commitment uh, in this day and time with the economy like it is um, to and pay for do that it year after year, year after year. Now you also have another recognition program that brings in parents. It's, it's a student recognition program that you do every nine weeks, is that yes. correct? Yes, yes. Um, and when we was talking about student recognition, um, because usually, you know, what I've been used to is, you, you know, you have your honor day, you mm -hmm. know, um, and, and we all know that uh, the younger kids are the hardiest to keep their attention span, and so the teachers felt that there was a need, and, and I I can't take the credit for it because, you know, I, I just wanted to do the, just the one honors day. And the teacher said, no, Mr. Ward, uh, it's going to be important to these parents who want to come in here every nine weeks, you know, and, and look at where their kids are academically, where they are with their attendance. Um, and so it, it's, it's been an exciting thing because it was able to get the parents in the building and once you're in the building, you, you get a chance to build that relationship and, and sell who you are as an organization. Um, 
So, and it educates the parent too on the environment in which their their child is being educated. So absolutely. it provides them with information so that the school is not just this building and this place filled with people who are doing something for kids. You get to know who's working on behalf of your child and, absolutely. and what they're learning and how well they're performing. So that's a great opportunity for, for parents and I, I appreciate you offering that. Okay, so you and your team plan to increase um, um, activities, and I know that we've mentioned most of them, but you, in, in mentioning them, you talked about your partners in education a little bit. Yes. So I'd like for you to expound a little bit more on that for our viewers, and for those who are watching, partners in education is a great opportunity for businesses, civic groups, faith-based um, organizations to become involved in education and we are pleased at the district level that we have over 160 businesses but there is definitely room for more to join forces with our school system to see uh, help meet some of those needs and to make a difference in the life of a child so tell us about your partners in ed the partners in education um, program is an awesome program in and of itself mm -hmm. um, but it, 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 it's, it's even more um, valuable um, when you're in a high poverty school. Okay. Um, because sometimes the, the, the kids do not have the, the, the finances to do certain things. And, and that's when your partners step in. Um, and they give you those resources uh, to make things happen for kids. Um, and that's, that's awesome. Um, when you can make a phone call, or when we have the annual meeting, um, your, your partners give you their contact information and say, you know, give me a call. You know, what are some of the things that you're doing? Um, one of the things that we do at the school, we call it the celebration of excellence. Okay. You know, where every nine weeks, um, and, and it's tied to academic performance, you know, students' attendance and behavior, um, where we bring all of the kids to the gym, you know, who have met expectations. Right. Um, and we provide them with um, a, a soda, uh, a snack, and, and just a lot of fun. We play music. It's an incentive for them to yes. recognize their achievements. Yes, okay. and, and the kids love it, you know. Um, but it takes finances to do that. And, mm. and um, we would not have been able to buy those snacks and things uh, if it had not been for our partners. So, uh, partners, thank you for all you do. <laughs> we, we really do thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, I know, again, that they, they are important, and I know that this year is wrapping up, and a lot of our viewers wonder what the schools and administrators do during the summer. So why don't you share what you would do as an administrator during the summer, how do you use that time? Because we know that school is wrapping up. So what will you do? Well, th there's a, a little principle that we live by, you know, as, as the school system, you know, it, it's a continuous uh, improvement cycle. Okay. You know, plan, do, check, check. act, you yes. know. And so um, in July, um, the 30th, you know, we will put together our school improvement plan, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and once our school improvement plan is put together, um, we implement it all throughout the school year, um, understanding that that school improvement plan is a, a living document, mm -hmm. you know, it changes based on what the needs are. Um, as we're putting that plan in place, once it's implemented, and we get our test scores back, then we check. Um, we check to see uh, what strategies that we implemented uh, that had a great effect, what strategies we may have put in place that didn't have any impact on student achievement. Um, and then based on what we learned from that data, then we act, you know. Okay. Then we may do something different, and then we get together the next year, and we plan that cycle all over again. Okay. Also, along with that, you know, we are planning for registration yes, during that time. That is coming up. Um, sometime during that time, 
teachers have to change from one classroom to the next uh, because you may have teachers retire, uh, you may have your population to get larger, you may get new teachers and send their new room assignments. So uh, making sure that the planners um, are in place, uh, any updates to the planners, uh, making sure that the teacher handbook is updated, any of the changes in the handbooks that need to be made. Um, Sometimes my brother, he, he, he laughed at me, he said, you know, there are no kids there. You, why are you go? What, what are you doing there? You know, you yeah. at work every day, and sometimes people don't know that. Uh, that's that's the, when the work really gets yes, started. Yes, because that's <laughs> when you can plan and reassess. Yes. And plan and prepare. So, but Mr. Ward, we are certain we are out of time, but we are certainly glad that you stopped by today. And if someone wants to contact you to learn more about Whitesell Road Elementary School, who should they call? Uh, they can call the school. Um, I may be making rounds and walking throughout the building, so if you can't get me directly, ask for Pam Huddleston, uh, who's my secretary. Um, the number is 706-812-7968. Or you can email me. Um, or you can just drop by, and, and um, we can walk throughout the building. You can spend some time just talk and get to know. Um, everything about Weiss Road that you would like to know. Well, again, thank you for joining us and thank you our viewers for tuning in. This has been Spotlight on Education. Until next time, make it a great day.